Well, here we are on the last day of the month, and uh, I've only just become aware that it's Islamophobia Awareness Month. How terribly unaware of me. Still better late than never. I think it's important to be aware of Islamophobia, don't you? Not the concept, obviously, because that doesn't exist, but the word, which does exist and has been growing like a tumour on the language for some years now. Happily, the last two decades of relentless Muslim grievance-mongering and knee-jerk offence have made many of us keenly aware of the word Islamophobia as a cynical weapon of cultural terrorism and an outrageous attempt to portray common sense as a mental illness. We're aware that it's a poisonous lie peddled by Islamists and leftists for the purpose of censoring the ugly truth about Islam and bludgeoning people into guilt-ridden silence, and we're aware that it's a sneaky way for a fascist ideology to depict itself as a victim and not as what it actually is, a predator. We're also aware that the word leaves an ugly stain on the character of everyone who uses it because each time it is used, a transparent and deliberate lie is told. However, Islamophobia is not the only thing we're aware of, not anymore, because thanks to those same two decades of shameless privilege-seeking and groundless complaining, we become aware that many Muslims have, well, special needs, in that they are psychologically chained to a raft of appalling double standards that we have to indulge if we're to avoid tantrums and violence. We're also aware of the default Islamic grievance monger's position that only their feelings are important and nobody else's feelings are worth a damn. We're aware of all this and we take it on board. Of course we do. Yeah, right. However, we're also aware that Islamic doctrine, with its disdain for freedom, its primitive view of women and gay people, its anti-Semitism and general hatred of all things non-Muslim, is entirely incompatible with all our fundamental beliefs and values, unfortunately. We're also aware that Islamic values are aggressively non-negotiable, which essentially offers us a choice between submission and permanent conflict. Thanks for that. We're aware that the arrival of Islam in the West has not enriched our society in the slightest. It has poisoned it and set us at each other's throats over fundamental freedoms we used to take for granted. And we're aware that Islam is being imposed upon us in the name of diversity, but it hasn't brought diversity. It's brought division and mistrust. And every time we hear the word Islamophobia, the divide gets wider and the mistrust grows. We're aware that there are far fewer violent physical attacks on Muslims than there are by Muslims on gay people and Jews, and that thanks to repeated unprovoked attacks by ignorant and uncivilised Muslim immigrants, Jews and gays no longer feel safe in several European countries, but nobody wants to do anything about it because it might be Islamophobic. We're aware that the professional complainers of Islam are quick to be offended by a movie trailer nobody's ever seen, but not when a young girl is shot in the head for wanting an education, nor by the thousands of other disgusting Muslim crimes against women. And we're aware that that makes them look like callous, opportunistic hypocrites, which in turn makes it impossible for us to take seriously anything they say. That's such a shame, isn't it? Muslims who find that their religion is viewed negatively, should have the good grace to stop skulking behind this slanderous word, show a little honesty for once, and admit that your religion is the problem. Because it is. It's a religion that doesn't preach universal brotherhood, but a universal Islamic domination, and there's a huge difference. It preaches hatred and violence in its holy scriptures, not just once or twice, but page after page. It shows open contempt for other beliefs and values, it defines itself in aggressively divisive terms between Muslims and infidels who must be conquered and converted, between the house of Islam and the house of war, no less. It urges Muslims not to take infidels as friends, to force their social values into the lives of those around them, and to shove their religion down everybody's throat as soon as they're strong enough to do so. It's ultra-sensitive to the point of paranoia, on a permanent hair trigger for possible imagined offence, and many of its followers regard violence as a legitimate response to criticism. Yet we're the ones with the mental illness? I don't think so. Hearing about the poor downtrodden Muslims as victims of Islamophobia is enough to bring tears to your eyes. Tears of laughter at the brazen effrontery of it. Islamophobia is no more real than Nazi-phobia. There are very good reasons to beware of both ideologies, and they are the same reasons. Far from being an oppressed minority, the evidence shows that Muslims are a pushy and aggressive minority, 
And when they're in a majority, they quickly become enthusiastic oppressors, driven by a laughable delusion of divinely ordained supremacism, which itself would be offensive if it wasn't such a sick joke. Because frankly, Islam is equipped to rule the world the way Mike Tyson is equipped to run NASA. I really think it's time the word Islamophobia was put out of its misery once and for all, because frankly, it's getting embarrassing now. That word is just so discredited and so provably statistically false that anyone still using it with a straight face merely shows the depth of their own dishonesty and their absolute contempt for the intelligence of everyone else. I still think an awareness month would be a good idea. I just think it would be more helpful to call it something else like a cultural terrorism awareness month or even better, a hatred and violence in the Quran awareness month. Because unlike Islamophobia, that's something that really does exist in black and white for everyone to read.